So this next presentation, um, or the next presenter, uh, he's one of the uh, co-founders of uh, this conference, uh, A&P Electronic Media, and um, what you're going to be learning about is one of the early books that we published, which was basically kind of a lead generator, show people the, the reality to the solar industry uh, for the purpose of uh, selling the John Bedini solar charge controllers, which pretty much are the only ones that I know that everybody who used them uh, we're not only very happy with them, they were thrilled because their batteries were actually um, getting charged. Uh, there was one guy in uh, Siberia who kept buying these big, you know, 80 amp, 24 volt models, and he kept buying them over and over and over, and he found out he was reselling them because it was the only thing they ever found that they could keep the batteries charged up uh, in, in that climate with that much, uh, that kind of cloud coverage. Um, it made a lot of difference for a lot of people's lives, and even if people aren't in, into solar, uh, just understanding a little bit about batteries. This has been uh, a free download for, for a long time. Uh, Peter Lindemann has um, worked with me in A&P Electronic Media and has personally authored uh, quite a few books and a lot of different uh, video presentations. Probably the one, one of the most popular that most people know is the SG Book Series um, from the you know beginners, intermediate, advanced, beyond the SG. Uh, he, you know, goes back to the days of the uh, early Borderland Science Research Foundation, working with uh, Eric Dollard, and and he's one of the ones that knew Chris Carson personally, who was behind this electrostatic generator. Um, he retired uh, several years back, but is still very interested in this field because of obviously, you know, the information itself, the quest for knowledge and what's going on and, and where we're going with all this and uh, how it helps people. And so please help me welcome Peter Lindemann. Thanks, Aaron. So um, it's really about an impedance matching process to get a, as usual in any power supply system, to get a, an efficient transfer of power. It's really about not just getting the voltage and current right, but getting the impedances right. So then, basically, then uh, the other thing is how to use the power in the battery. Uh, usually, this is done with a, an inverter uh, you know, up here, uh, something that'll take the low voltage DC and turn it into whatever your appliances use. Okay, and um, so this is typically how these things are set up. They're um, the the panels and the charge controllers and the batteries and the inverters are all one big parallel string usually, and um, so they constantly are set up so that the, batter the, the, the panels, during the day, the panels are trying to charge the battery while the ba battery is still being used to try and charge, uh, to run the house. And so the idea that um, the battery is being asked to both be charged and discharged at the same time, and the efficiencies of this are extremely low um, because they're, um, unlike, um, a jug of water where you can pour water in the top and pull stuff out of the spout, a battery only has one electrochemical pathway. Here we, we show um, these, these types and obviously, so the obvious winner here is the, uh, you know, the mono, monocrystalline silicon cells and uh, the 48 volt systems. And this is exactly what um, uh, Jennifer uh, and so many other people that we know have set up their systems as. So, um, let's see. So here's, here's uh, a little efficiency um, uh, graph I, I grabbed off the internet. And again, uh, they're showing that, you know, the efficiencies of these things are, are rising. And, and, and really, um, I mean, they're, they're suggesting that efficiencies will even rise even more by 2030. Um, but you, you, if you heard Paul's talk yesterday, um, you know, he's talking about, you know, these, these newer devices that have, you know, spectacular capabilities, the silicon carbide, you know, MOSFETs and things like this. So this is where, this is where um, these, these generalized efficiencies are rising in, in, in these decades here, okay? And now let's look at this rotten amorphous panel here, okay? This is this 15%, and the reason it's rated at 15% is because if I take a one square meter of amorphous panels, it'll only produce 150 watts. 
out of the f supposed thousand that's going to show up. So, but its, its sensitivity spectrum is right here where we need it in the, in the visible range. In other words, it peaks right here in the, in, in the green yellow visible, visible spectrum. And it's still getting, you know, vastly more, vastly more here, even in the blue. So when you aim this thing away from the sun at the blue sky, you're still getting way more out of the uh, amorphous panel than you are from the silicon panel. I mean, like what? 200% more, or I'm something crazy. So the, the idea here is, and then so if we superimpose what happens when a cloud goes over, you can see that the amorphous panel is still able to give you the bulk of what it um, is doing, even if it's under cloudy skies. It was pro published in 1922. We ended up calling it the Battery Bible. And it was really a maintenance book for um, farmers uh, in the 1920s who were putting in uh, the new electric milking machines and these types of things, uh, you know, on their farms out in Kansas or wherever else. And these farmers didn't want to be chemists and they didn't want to be electricians and they didn't want to be any of that junk. They wanted to be farmers, okay? So this book told them exactly how to maintain the battery and get their 5,000 cycles out of it so that they could run their milking machines, okay? And so what it shows and what we preached for decades is that the standard charge curve looks like this. And this is for a 12 volt, basically a 12 volt system. And these numbers, you know, maybe you know, a little bit you know, screwy, but basically we, we figure this is, you know, 15.1, 15.2, 15.3, depends on the exact chemistry, but somewhere around 15. But the, the important thing is, is that a battery is um, an electrochemical machine, okay? And its, its structure is idiotically simple, plastic case, the negative plate is pure sponge lead. The positive plate is lead oxide. And it's the chemical difference between those two substances which create the voltage dif the potential difference. So it's the chemical difference that produces the voltage difference. So here, I want to finish, since I'm running a little late, I want to finish by showing you um, the off-grid system uh, that was developed by Al Francoeur, based on this book. I, I, I helped him start, but he, he's one of these guys who just doesn't ever, ever stop. And uh, so he is completely off-grid. He was forced off-grid when he refused to take a smart meter from BC Hydro. They eventually disconnected him because they refused to, to uh, read his meter. So um, he didn't want to do this, um, but uh, he was forced. And um, luckily, I was working with him at the time, and uh, I knew all this, and I just, I just said, look, this is where you've got to go. So this is, uh, so uh, here, this, this, this building here, this is his battery um, facility. Um, these are the big uh, amorphous panels, which he bought after he'd already bought all these uh, silicon panels. But these, these are the things that save his butt all the time. Um, these, these basically produce almost nothing in the winter, and these things top the batteries um, in the winter all the time. So he also had this uh, wind generator up here, um, and uh, he, was, he was really happy with it. It was a, a, a modified um, uh, alternator from a car that he'd put a, a permanent magnet in, and um, what he didn't realize was that that made the, the device 100% voltage production is speed, you know, rate of change, right? So he never had enough wind to produce enough voltage to get into the battery. So he was like them. They, he, had a, he had a wind generator that never did anything for his. So, um, okay, uh, he has never, uh, he's never equalized this in four years. Uh, here is his, uh, he's got a, a, just a, a straight-out um, inverter. 
and uh, in the winter, his property is, is uh, heated with a, a central wood furnace that, that sends uh, heat to all the buildings and everything else. And so here's his radiator so that even in the winter, in the dead of winter, his batteries are above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Wind generator comes in here, we rectify it, uh, go into the boost converters, which are set at uh, an output of uh, 30, 31 or something. So, so if, the, if, the, if the wind comes up, it can always put something in over, even over the panels. Um, and, um, and then we also have a manual throw switch here so that if we know a windstorm's coming up or something, you can just throw this and it'll throw the output of this into this big dummy load and keep it from running away. So it's all, it's all right here, it's all manual. Um, and uh, so if uh, the wind generator gets up to the, the nominal start voltage of these boost converters, which is about eight volts, I can start putting 31 volts into the battery. If it wasn't for John Bedini, we wouldn't, none of us would know this, uh, this stuff, and uh, we miss you, John. So with that Meanwell charge controller, you yeah. just set that voltage and it's automatically going to follow that profile that you showed us. Yeah, in other words, if, I, if, if, the, if the power comes out of the, of the Meanwell at 30 volts, okay, yep. it's immediate, uh, the, from an impedance point of view, um, it's going to drop immediately to the voltage that the battery is, is standing at, okay, but, and, and, and deliver current, as much current as it can based on, on the buck, um, um, you know, processes in the, in the system. So, um, but what's nice about it is, is that as the battery rises in, in charge and, and starts approaching that 30 volts, the differential in there, that differential voltage starts telling the current to, to, to roll off. So you, by the time it, you, you're, you're actually topping the battery, you don't want to be charging it hard. You don't want to be throwing 25 amps at it, you know, across that last tenth of a volt. Um, because that's, that's going to make hydrogen, because it's just, there, there's so little of the chemistry left to, to process that um, you're, you're going to interrupt that complex process of, of, of breaking up the water molecule and making sure that both of the ions go where they're supposed to be to create the battery chemistry of the full charge condition.